Well, this uh, is a video on a hypothetical um, of Daniel's 70th week, possibly being in the time period from 2017 to 2024, related to the so-called celestial signs of 2017 to 24. Um, I had published prior videos on this, and I still think the hypothesis is intact. Uh, my focus has not been on the rapture, uh, but more on the events surrounding division of the land of the everlasting covenant, which is what I believe this was pointing to all along. I haven't created any videos in a while for reasons that we'll get to. Um, my plan is to do three to four videos. This one will deal with the first half of the hypothetical 70th week of Daniel. The next video will deal with the second half. The third video hopefully will deal with um, the seals uh, of Revelation where we might be at this time. Uh, as, as I would think that we are in the third seal. Um, so we'll cover that. And then uh, the fourth topic will be things that we can do as uh, believers. Um, Certainly, interest has increased with uh, the uh, advent of coronavirus, um, but there are other things too, uh, wars and rumors of war, uh, locust plagues of epic proportions, and, um, uh, and so all of these events together have really piqued interest in this topic, and um, I've been asked by members of my small group to bring us up to date. Um, but for the last couple of years, I've been waiting um, on certain events, and, um, and we'll get to that. So this is just a hypothesis. I'm not saying that this is the way it is. By any means, I'm not a prophet, um, and I would never claim to be. I'm just presenting um, an, an idea based on um, you know, the so-called celestial signs, and if, if they are true, then certain things have to happen, and we would expect certain things to happen, and that's what I'm hoping to cover. So um, thank you for, for listening and bearing with me. Well, in Joel chapter 3, we know that uh, one of the proximate causes of judgment is division of the land. In Joel chapter 3, the nations are gathered to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and the nations are indicted because they scattered the people and they divided up his land. Isaiah 24 also refers to what's called the everlasting covenant. The earth is defiled by its inhabitants, for they, the world, transgressed laws, violated statutes, and broke the everlasting covenant. Well, what is the everlasting covenant? It's first mentioned in Genesis 17, verse 8. Speaking to Abraham, I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land of your sojournings, all of the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. In 1 Chronicles 16, this is reiterated to Jacob. He confirmed it to Jacob for a statute to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan as the portion of your inheritance. So the everlasting covenant is closely related to the land promise to Abraham. And this is reiterated word for word in Psalm 105, verses 10 and 11. So he confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan. So we have that now in three areas. And we, from Joel, we know that the proximate cause of judgment from Joel chapter 3 and Isaiah 24 is division of the land. Now with respect to the, uh, to the second coming, uh, when the disciples uh, asked Jesus what would be the signs of his coming and of the end of the age, Luke 21, 25, Jesus stated there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. It's interesting because in Genesis chapter 1, um, it's stated, stated that lights in the heavens will be for signs, seasons, for days and years. Well, we understand seasons, days, and years. It's kind of a calendar, but what about the signs? Well, in Revelation, we have three 
signs in heaven that are stated by John. In Revelation 12, we have the sign of the woman in labor, and we also have the sign of the fiery dragon. While in Revelation 15, we have the sign of the seven angels and seven plagues, and these are all described as signs in heaven by John, and we'll cover those in the next couple of videos. So the premise of the hypothesis is, are the celestial signs, or the so-called celestial signs of 2017 to 24, in division of the land, are they connected? Are they connected at all as the sign of Jesus' imminent return? Well, I want to take you all the way back to um, December 17th to 20th, 2016. This is before the sign of the woman in labor. Zedek is, is the Hebrew name for Jupiter, the planet. And Jupiter right here is entering Virgo, the constellation. So this could be thought of as conception on December the 17th, 2016. Were there any events uh, related to division of the land around the time of conception? Turns out that the Jewish village of Amona um, was evacuated. And this is on December the 18th, the very next day, Amona, the residents agreed to be evacuated from their village in Samaria. So the people of Amona were evacuated, but then we have this verse, passages in Amos 9, chapter 9, verses 14 and 15. I will restore the captivity of my people Israel. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. And I will also plant them on their land, and they will not again be rooted out from their land, which I have given them. So if the village of Amona were evacuated, wouldn't that violate Amos 9, 14, and 15? And the answer would be yes, except that the people of, of Amona were able to resettle in an area very nearby called Amakai. They named the new village Amakai, which means the people live. So they didn't get uprooted out of Samaria. Um, otherwise, that passage would have been uh, indeed violated. Now, on a little less than a week later, this is December the 23rd, 2016, the United States allowed Security Council Resolution 2334 to pass because we abstained. We did not veto it like we normally would have. And that resolution, 2334, states that Jewish settlement in Judea and Samaria um, is really not legal because that is meant for Palestinian state. Well, on September 23rd, uh, 2017, we have the sign of the woman in labor. This is the constellation Virgo. And on um, there's a crown of 12 stars. The nine primary visible stars of Leo are present. And then we have the three wild cards. These are planets, moving objects, and they serve as wild cards or jokers. Uh, the three of them then make a crown of 12. Jupiter is in the, in the womb, the woman's in labor, and the moon is at her feet. So the criteria of the heavenly sign are present here. And this is an apparently unique sign as far forward or back as you would go in time. There, uh, there have been proposals that there, this has been repeated before, but on close examination, it's never been in this exact configuration. So in that sense, it's it could be considered as a unique arrangement at this time. And the woman is in labor on 23rd of September, which is exactly nine months after the passage of UN Resolution 2334. 
So from December 17th, 2016 to September 23rd, 2017, this is conception, this is labor, it's exactly 20, 280 days, which is the exact human gestational period. 22 days after uh, UN Resolution 2334 passed, on January 15, 2017, uh, the French held a peace summit in Paris, and it was attended by 70 nations, which is important symbolically to the Jewish people because 70 represents the number of Gentile nations. Since there were uh, Noah had 70 grandsons from which all of the peoples of the world uh, descended from. So 70 was uh, symbolically important and the outcome of this uh, peace summit was again that the tenets of resolution, UN resolution 2334 had to be, had to be followed. So the outcome of the Paris Peace Conference was uh, a call for both sides to a firm commitment to the two-state solution. And Israel was uh, uh, discouraged from uh, providing any more settlements uh, in Judea and Samaria because that would uh, complicate the two-state solution in the eyes of the world. And um, the two-state solution, of course, would be in violation of the everlasting covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, that God provided himself. Now, on October 15th, 2017, we see that Jupiter or Zedek is leaving Virgo. So it took nine months and that nine, nine months and then finally Zedek or Jupiter is leaving Virgo. This represents birth. So the child is being birthed from Virgo. And we have this little interesting verse, Micah 5 verse 3. So Micah 5, 3 states this, Therefore he, the Messiah, shall give them his people up. Until when? Until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. Well, if this is referring to the woman in labor of Revelation 12, depicted by the celestial sign on September 23, 2017, and he's given up his people, until the time that she has given birth, and if she gave birth on October 15, 2017, then that would suggest that October 15, 2017 could possibly mark the onset of Daniel's 70th week. And that's one of the main premises of this hypothesis. So if Daniel's 70th week, if the onset then is when the woman gives birth, on the 15th of October 2017, and if that's the potential date of onset of the 70th week, and if we work forward from there, well then we can determine if day counts and timelines can extend from this time point. So the hypothesis then would be that this is the onset, and therefore we have to account for the seven years of a 70th week and their day counts that we would have to count for, including 1260, 1290, um, and then uh, the 2300 evenings and mornings. So everything would have to fit this potential timeline, and that's what we'll look at going forward. For that to be true, we also need to have the sign of the fiery dragon. And this was taken from one of the prior videos, and I, I believe this is a pretty good representation, potentially, of that fiery dragon. We have the seven diadems of Corona Borealis, the seven crowns, here, and that's sitting on top of Caput Serpents, which has seven stars, and uh, each star represents a head. So we have seven crowns on seven heads of Caput Serpents. Cauda serpents has five stars, and they would make up five horns. Now, horn 
in Greek can refer to the very tip or point. It can be a point source. So I believe that the stars could be considered horns. Then we have five moving objects, Saturn, Mercury, the Sun, Venus, and Mars. And they would make up the remaining five horns. And drawing a line from Mars all the way over to the tail caught of serpents occupies one third of the breadth of the heaven. And so the tail seems to sweep one third of the heaven. Now this is on the 15th of October, right at the time of the birth of Jupiter from Virgo. So it's lying there in wait to devour the child. Now this arrangement disappears by October 17th because the moon comes into the picture and the sign ends. So this sign of the red fiery dragon in this configuration was only present for four days around the birth of Zedek. And this is interesting because this allows us to make a parallelogram uh, of these dates. And what we have then is uh, UN resolution was on the 23rd of December 2016. That's resolution 2334. Nine months later, exactly, is the woman in labor on 23rd se September 2017. 22 days after UN resolution 2334, we have the Paris Peace Conference of 70 Nations. That was on the 15th of January 2017. Uh, the 22 and a half days is because of the time difference between Paris and New York. Nine months exactly after the Paris conference on the 15th of October 2017, we have the birth of Jupiter from Virgo, possibly the onset of the 70th week, that's the hypothesis, and the possible appearance of the fiery dragon, which was present for four days around the time that Jupiter was birthed. And this followed by 22 days after the woman in labor. So we have a nice little perfect parallelogram. Now, moving forward, on August 21st, 2017, was the first of the great American eclipses. And that eclipse happened to occur right on top of Regulus, the king star in the constellation of Leo, which was prominent in the star of Bethlehem, many think. And it's interesting that the eclipse occurred right on top of the king star. We see that at this time, Zebek is in the womb. This is before the woman goes into labor, and this is on August 21st, 2017. And we can see the track of that eclipse as it crossed America on August 21st, 2017. It's interesting that it uh, entered or initially hit the Oregon coast over Salem, Oregon. It crossed over several Salems as it crossed the United States and exited at Salem, South Carolina, which was, uh, that's interesting. Now the time from the solar eclipse to the sign of the woman in labor on 23rd September was 33 days. It was another 12 days to the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, so therefore, it was 45 days total from the eclipse to the Tabernacles. Now, um, we're not going to cover this now, but it will be important later when we look at the second eclipse to see if we have a similar pattern. So just remember these day counts in association with the eclipse uh, for now. So we could think of the first eclipse and the sign of the woman in labor as kind of a representing a bookend on the front end of Daniel's 70th week. It'll be interesting to look seven years later if we have a similar pattern on the back end. On the very day of the eclipse on the 21st of August, that's the exact day Jared Kushner flew out of New York to Riyadh for the first time to present the deal of the century to Mohammed bin Salman. It's the first time it had been presented anywhere out of uh, the United States. So on the very exact day of that solar eclipse, Jared Kushner flew to Riyadh to present the plan to divide the land. A month later, we have Yom Teruah, 
the day of the shofar, or Rosh Hashanah Feast of Trumpets. That's on the 21st and 22nd of September of 2017. Now, on those dates, Mahmoud Abbas and Donald Trump each presented to the UN General Assembly speeches dealing with division of the land of the everlasting covenant. In fact, the day before those speeches, Abbas said that Trump may have the Mideast on the verge of a peace deal. This was before he knew the details. That was He made that statement on the 20th of September, the day before Feast of Trumpets. So the question is, maybe Daniel's 70th week has begun. Well, Daniel 9.27 the Hebrew of that verse is Behigbir Berit Larabim Shabua Akkad. And literally word for word in the English, this is, he will cause to strengthen covenant with many, week one. And these words aren't rearranged and there's no punctuation added like translators tend to do. This is the, purely what the Hebrew says. Now, Behigbir is an interesting word. This is the only time this word occurs in this form in the Bible. The root of this is gabar, which is to make strong. Well, the higbir is a third person verb causative variant of gabar. It's a hyphal. Hyphals do not exist in the English language, but they do in the Hebrew. And the, I'll illustrate it this way. If, if I were to mow my yard, then I'm the person doing the mowing. I'm, caught, I'm mowing the yard. Well, if I didn't mow the yard, but I asked my son to mow the yard, then I cause my yard to be mowed. Well, that's the hyphal variant, and that's what the higbir is. So the, the, whoever strengthens the covenant here doesn't directly strengthen it, but causes it indirectly to be strengthened. Now, berit uh, is the word for covenant, and it's not like we normally think of in English. In our English thinking minds, we think of a covenant as something that has been signed and ratified, signed, sealed, and delivered. But in Hebrew, that's not necessarily the case. It's much broader. So a berit can be pretense, it can be present tense, it can be future tense. An example would be the new covenant spoken of in Jeremiah. And he spoke of it as a covenant 600 years before it was even ratified. So this idea that you have to have some kind of a treaty that's signed off in front of the news media is really a mistaken idea. Uh, it can be any kind of a proposal, um, so it's it's broader than we normally think. Larabim is with the multitude. Shabua is a period of seven a week. Akkad is one. So the idea is that whoever is the one doing the strengthening, it's not a, a one-time event. He will be causing the covenant to be strengthened for the entire Shabuah, for the entire week. So has Daniel's 70th week begun with the birth of Zedek on the 15th of October, 2017? Well, immediately in the week after the birth of Zedek, Jared Kushner returned to Saudi Arabia to present the final points of the plan to divide the land and to discuss this. Um, he traveled there on the 22nd of October. Uh, Mohammed bin Salman strongly endorsed the plan and in fact called Mahmoud Abbas back to Riyadh on November the 6th to inform him that he had to accept the plan or he would indeed be replaced. So, so far the hypothesis is intact because every celestial alignment is closely associated in time within a week and many times on the very day of events strongly correlated to division of the land of the everlasting covenant. So it's possible then that Muhammad bin Salman uh, would be the he of Daniel 9.27, that he is the one then that caused strengthening of the deal of the century, Trump's plan to divide the land. And um, if the hypothesis is true, I would expect this to occur for the entire seven year period. He'll, he'll continue to support uh, this plan throughout the entire seven years of Daniel's 70th week. One of the reasons that I had not um, 
performed any more videos uh, after this point in time was because I was waiting for a second witness. I wanted to see whether or not the Saudi crown prince would again strengthen the plan and uh, carry the water for Trump's plan to divide the land. There have been some recent events that would suggest yes, uh, but I further anticipate uh, more of this activity on his part um, in the future in the coming weeks and months. I was really waiting for a second witness before I uh, uh, created a new video, and that's that's why I have been um, patient with it. Um, these other events that I think uh, have come up, including the locust plague and the coronavirus and wars and rumors of wars and the race for hypersonic and nuclear weapons, has um, prompted me to go ahead and present this. But if the Saudis do not uh, further strengthen the plan, then that would be something that would falsify the hypothesis. And um, But that's one of the features that I'm looking for in the coming months. So we mentioned that Mohammed bin Salman actually summoned Mahmoud Abbas to Riyadh, where he was informed that he had to accept the plan or he would be replaced. And Mohammed bin Salman would see to that. And so in this sense, and by um, rallying other Sunni Arab nations behind the plan, then he has fulfilled that heifel of Daniel 9.27. He has, in fact, caused the plan to be strengthened because, to my thinking, without Sunni Arab support, and without support of the Saudis, um, Trump's plan would have absolutely no chance of success. And even now, it appears in the minds of many that it is on rocky ground, but it's certainly not dead, and the Saudis are still continuing to support it. I would like to see uh, the crown prince step up and take a more personal approach to it, uh, which would tend to confirm um, what he did back in October of 2017. Now, the other nations that Mohammed bin Salman enlisted uh, included Egypt, Jordan, the United Arab Emirates, and other Sunni Arab Gulf uh, nations. And uh, so he rallied the Sunni Arabs to support this plan to divide the land, the deal of the century. Um, now, at the time, Jordan wasn't aware that, uh, in fact, the U United States had suggested that the Saudis could take control of Temple Mount. And so, as of today, Jordan is not supportive of it, but the other nations listed here are, in fact, still supportive of the deal of the century. So, as I mentioned, um, in the deal of the century, it was suggested that uh, Saudi Arabia could uh, be given control of Temple Mount to be taken away from the Jordanian Waqf, uh, who has been administrating this under Israeli permission since the Six-Day War. And uh, this was too big of a carrot for Mohammed bin Salman to pass up because it would, in effect, give Saudi Arabia control of the three holiest sites in Islam, including Mecca, Medina, and now Temple Mount in Jerusalem. So has it begun? Well, we could make a case that the hypothetical 70th week of Daniel has begun because, in fact, Mohammed bin Salman did cause Trump's plan to be strengthened, the plan that will lead to division of the land. Now let's look a little further at the uh, sign of uh, Revelation 12, the signs, the so-called celestial signs. In Revelation 12, 5, the woman gives birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God in his throne. And then again in Revelation 12, 9, the great dragon was thrown down. He's identified for us, the serpent of old, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, and he was thrown down to the earth. It will be interesting to see if there's a celestial representation for these two events. So we'll, we'll look at that currently. This is an artist's rendition of the of Virgo, um, who was the one who was in labor and gave birth to the male child on October 15th, 2017. And this is a... Uh, artist's rendition of Libra, the scales of justice. Now, Libra is also depicted as a woman sitting on a throne holding the scales of justice. 
Well, we know who is assigned justice, and the scales of justice uh, will be held by God himself, and um, therefore, you could consider Libra to be the God's throne. In Psalm 89, 14, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. And again, in Psalm 97, 2, righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Acts 10, 42 states it this way, the one who has been appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead, that is Jesus. In Hebrews 8, 1, we have such a high priest who has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. So, scales of justice, um, and justice is the foundation of his throne. So, Libra could be thought of also as God's throne. This is Ophiuchus, a pictorial representation of the serpent wrestler. And this picture kind of elicits in me, and I imagine Michael wrestling with the serpent. So what we have here is, the date is the 15th of October, 2017. And on that date, Jupiter here is leaving the constellation Virgo. So this is the birth date of Jupiter. Jupiter has been hanging out in Virgo for the better part of a year. Now, on the date that Jupiter is birthed, it is going to head straight to the throne of God, which is Libra, right here. And what I want you to notice at the same time is that Saturn is here, and it is in Ophiuchus, the serpent wrestler. Saturn, the Satan planet, has been present in Ophiuchus for the better part of a year. Now, simultaneous to Jupiter heading to Libra, Saturn is going to head to Sagittarius on the same day. So I'm going to show you that animation. And here we go. Watch Jupiter and Saturn. The same, simultaneous to Jupiter going to Libra, we have Saturn arriving in Sagittarius. So I think this is a pictorial representation of, of the child being born and going to the throne of God at the same time that Saturn, the Satan planet, is thrown out of Ophiuchus to Sagittarius. So what we have then is we have Zedek or Jupiter now in God's throne, Libra the scales of justice. This happens to be a conjunction with Mars on January the 6th, 2018. And this would be in the first year of Daniel's, or da, uh, Daniel's 70th week. Saturn is now in Sagittarius. So when Jupiter was birthed, it escaped to the throne of God, away from the red dragon. Simultaneous to that, Saturn, uh, the occult planet representing Satan, was thrown out of Ophiuchus to Sagittarius, to Earth. And Sagittarius is the rider with the bow, as we will see. Now, what about the result of Revelation 12? You know, uh, it talks about great signs in heaven. Um, it talks about spiritual warfare with Michael uh, throwing Satan to earth and woe to the earth while the heavens rejoice. Well, we can't see that on earth. We don't see that. But we can see the results of it. So what are the results of Revelation 12? Well, one of the results is that when the dragon saw that he was thrown down to the earth, he persecuted the woman. This is something that we can see real life. He persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. And the woman is represented by Israel. So the dragon was enraged with the woman and then went off to make war with the rest of her children. Well, who are they? Well, they're the ones that keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. In other words, they're Christians. So we would expect to see 
as a result of Revelation 12, the outcome of this chapter is the real-world effects of anti-Jewish and anti-Christian persecution. And that is the outcome of Revelation 12. And I believe that the sign of the woman in labor and the sign of the red dragon, uh, if the celestial signs are correct, are kind of like a calendar telling us when we would expect to see these things happen. Well, this map is uh, the World Watch List 2020, which documents the surge in anti-Christian persecution on this uh, world map. Uh, the hot nations, the hotter the color, the worse it is. Um, and clearly there's been an increase in anti-Christian persecution. And it wasn't just in 2019, but uh, worldwide we saw a spike beginning in 2017 in accordance with uh, the sign of the woman in labor and the birth of Jupiter from Virgo. Uh, the Anti-Defamation League tracks anti-Semitic events and from 2016 to 2017 with the birth of the child and Satan being thrown to earth, there was a 67% spike in anti-Semitic incidents just in the United States alone. And if you look at a bar graph over the last decade, you can see the difference from 2016 to 2017, this marked increase. This is 2018, which is a little bit less than 2017, but they're projecting 2019, which will be reported soon, will be even higher. So you can see that we had a big spike in anti-Semitism uh, at that time of the sign of the woman in labor. So I believe that what we're seeing is the effects of the results of Revelation 12, which was anti-Christian and anti-Jewish persecution. And I believe we have seen Revelation 12 play out before our eyes. And Satan is now on the earth, uh, roaming and overcoming. So woe to the earth, the fiery dragon is thrown down. He has but a short time is resulting in increased persecution of Jews and Christians around the world. Now this is the uh, depiction of Sagittarius, the rider with a bow. And that's interesting because the first seal of Revelation, I saw and lo a white horse and he was sitting upon it as having a bow and there was given to him a crown and he went forth overcoming and that he may overcome. Now, the word for overcome in Greek is Nikon, and usually in the Bible, Nikon means to overcome or overcoming. Now, many translations of this passage say conquering and to conquer, but really I believe overcoming is a better uh, word. Uh, for those that are unbelievers, um, they're susceptible to satanic demonic influence, and I believe they're being overcome. If you have Christ uh, as a believer, uh, then that, that won't be possible because they can't influence you. Now, if the sign of the woman in labor and the birth of Jupiter from Virgo in 2017 are legitimate signs, we have to account for something. We have to account for the 1,260 days, this is intimately tied to the sign. So um, if the birth on October 15th was important, then we have to account for 1,260 days. Now, the woman is relatively protected. Israel is relatively protected for uh, three and a half years at uh, the first half of the 70th week. And um, Right now, we have a president in office who has been a great supporter of Israel, recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And I would say that in the last couple of years, that yes, Israel has been relatively protected, but this is going to end um, at the end of what, 1260 days. So
10th or uh, October 15th, 2017 to March 28th, 2021 is exactly 1260 days. That matches Revelation 12. Turns out that that's Passover 2021, the first day of Passover. And I would suggest that that would be the day that there would be a stop to sacrifices in accordance with uh, the abomination of desolation. So the idea would be that there would be a stop to sacrifices on the first day of Passover, followed by the abomination of desolation on April 1st, 2021, in the middle of Passover week. Now in Matthew 24, 15, Jesus said, when you see the abominations of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, there will be a great tribulation such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever shall. And that, that's important because there's not any passage in the scripture that refers to the entire week of Daniel as tribulation. In fact, when tribulation is used, it always refers to the second half, the latter half of Daniel's 70th week, which occurs after the abomination of desolation. Well, it turns out that on Passover 20, March 28, 2021, we find Saturn, the satanic planet, within Capricorn. And Capricorn is the constellation that is uh, worshipped by the occult. It's the horned goat as depicted here. Now Saturn um, is referred to by a Mesopotamian word in Amos 5, Kiyun. Um, most scholars and historians believe that that's referring to the planet Saturn. Amos 5.26 says, You carried along Sikketh your king, and Kiyun your images, the star of your gods, which you made for yourself. So Israel was indicted for adopting these pagan uh, occultish uh, practices, and Saturn, the planet, was intimately associated with that. So the 1st of April 2021 is the middle of Passover week. And that would be when the abomination of desolation would occur uh, and the Great Tribulation would begin. Now, if there's a stop to sacrifices in Passover week of 2021, that would imply that the daily sacrifices, the morning and evening sacrifice, would resume prior to that time. We have not seen that yet. Um, and we probably won't see that until a red heifer ceremony is performed. Um, the red heifer, a perfect red heifer, must be sacrificed on the Mount of Olives. The ashes from that sacrifice are then mixed with pure water, and that mixture then is used to ritually purify individuals. Now, this is discussed in Numbers 19 as the only means by which somebody could be made ritually pure after contact with death. Um, there's not a lot of detail in Numbers 19, but there is a lot of detail uh, in the Jewish Mishnah. Nevertheless, this is the means that was given uh, to the Israelites to purify themselves after contact with death. Now, uh, the ashes of the red heifer were used in the sprinkling of individuals before they ascended Temple Mount at Passover. So there's a special red heifer sacrifice or a Sabbath that occurs uh, in the weeks prior to Passover. So before the daily sacrifices uh, will be resumed, uh, then we would anticipate a red heifer ceremony. But to do that, you have to have a red heifer. Well, the new Sanhedrin that's been reconstituted is actually set out to do that. They are actively working hard to um, breed red heifers. And the first candidate uh, that still is uh, a good candidate um, was born on August 28th, 2018, and this was announced um, in this uh, newsletter. So since then, they have two other candidates. So they have now three red heifer candidates uh, that they're um, 
actively grooming to be the next red heifer, which will be the tenth one in history and which is the one that is associated with the return of the Messiah. So um, that would earliest time would be this coming fall. If this doesn't happen and resumption of sacrifices does not happen between now and next Passover in 2021, then that is something that would uh, falsify the hypothesis. This has to happen. So this is the second thing that I'm really looking towards, and that is resumption of daily sacrifices following a red heifer uh, sacrifice. And, uh, and then the other thing would be Muhammad bin Salman continuing to strengthen the deal of the century to divide the land of the everlasting covenant. Now, um, last summer, they reported that they had done a practice red heifer. They actually did a one on the Mount of Olives. They burned a heifer. It was not a red one, but they needed to calculate how much ash it produced and, um, and whether or not they had enough and how much they needed um, in order. Their goal would be to ritually purify all of the Jews in Israel, and that's their goal. And so they're anxiously looking forward to having a red heifer that they can gather the ash and mix with the spring water to complete the ceremony. And this would allow them then to ritually purify uh, the altar and the priests uh, that would administer the ceremony. So the red heifer that was born on August 28, 2020, uh, assuming that it's still pure, um, and is judged to be pure by the rabbis, uh, then any time after that, that red heifer would be eligible to be sacrificed and the ash mixed then with the pure water uh, so that ritual purification could occur and resumption of daily sacrifices could occur. Um, I think that they'll likely do that sometime this fall. In any case, the ash water mixture will be ready for purification by the time of the red heifer sabbath uh, next year which is on the 6th of march 2021 and that happens to be exactly 22 days before passover 2021 so i would anticipate uh, this fall that a red heifer uh, sacrifice will be done with resumption of sacrifices by march of next year which would then set the stage for the abomination of desolation. Now, some would say, but don't you have to have the temple? The temple um, has to be present uh, for the, the abomination of desolation to occur. Well, I would just direct you to the story of Jeshua ben Jehozadak in Ezra chapter 3. Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and his brothers, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, and his brothers arose, and they built the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings on it. And then on verse 6, from the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, but the foundation of the temple of the Lord had not been laid. So they were going to build the temple. They didn't have it ready. In fact, the foundation, but they resumed sacrifices, and it was under it was under the guidance of Jeshua, the son of Josadak. So they resumed sacrifices before the temple, the final temple, was built. Now, the tabernacle served as kind of a temporary temple until the permanent one could be built, and so I believe that. What will happen is that sacrifices will be resumed, maybe in a tabernacle, uh, but they'll have their portable altar that they can use. Um, and so they will do that before the building of the temple. And then in Zechariah chapter 6, it, uh, here we have the same Jeshua ben Jehozadak. Here it's Joshua, the son of Jehozadak. And Say to him, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold a man whose name is Branch, for he will branch out from where he is, and he will build the temple of the Lord. Yes, it is he who will build the temple of the Lord, and he who will bear the honor and sit and rule on his throne. Well, this is clearly a messianic prophecy. Speaking of the Messiah, who will rebuild the temple, we know him as Branch, 
and he will sit and sit on the throne. So Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, is a forerunner of the Messiah who will rebuild the temple. And there's a lot in the name. Jeshua is the same as Joshua, is the same as Yeshua, is the same as Jesus. And it means Yahweh is salvation. Ben means the son of, and Jehozadak is Jehozadak, or Jehozadak means Yahweh is righteous. Yahweh is salvation, son of Yahweh is righteous. So from the time of the woman in labor, September 23rd, 2017, then 22 days later, we had the birth of Jupiter. And then 1260 days exactly from the woman in labor takes us to the red heifer Sabbath on March 6th, 2021, followed 22 days later by Passover, March 28th, 2021, which follows the birth of Zedek by 1260 days. So another perfect parallelogram. We can also now combine the other um, blocks to this parallelogram. So starting in the upper left, 23rd December 2016, that was when UN Resolution 2334, dealing with uh, the two-state solution, was passed followed 22 days later by the Paris Conference of 70 Nations. Each of those in turn followed by nine months by the woman in labor on 23rd September 2017 and the birth of Jupiter on the 15th of October 2017, separated by 22 days. And then each of those is followed 1260 days later, respectively, by the Red Heifer Sabbath on March 6, 2021, separated 22 days from Passover 2021. So it'll be interesting to see if indeed a Red Heifer is sacrificed uh, this fall and then followed by resumption of the daily and morning sacrifices in a tabernacle structure uh, near or on Temple Mount um, by next year, which would set the stage for the abomination of desolation. Um, but the, the timelines here are very suggestive in my mind. So this last slide uh, shows the 70th week of Daniel proposed. We've just covered really the first half, connecting the birth of Zedek on the 15th of October 2017 as a hypothetical start of Daniel's 70th week accompanied by the fiery dragon of Revelation 12 and connected to events that deal with the vision of the land of the everlasting covenant. And we have the verse of Micah 5, which states that he will give the, his people up until the time that she is in labor is given birth. And that is followed 1260 days later by March 28, 2021, Passover, where the stop to sacrifices would be instituted, followed uh, at the middle of Passover week, three days later, by the abomination of desolation in the middle of the week. And in the next video, we will cover the last half of the hypothetical Daniel 70th week and see how the heavenly signs and potential events line up. So if we are in the 70th week, just a few things. We need to be prepared as believers to share what we have with others, to be prepared uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, and be prepared to share not only our physical goods, but also the gospel. And to point out that whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved, as according to Romans 10, 13, and, um, and to Joel for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 Well, thank you all for uh, your time and for listening, and I'll pick it up hopefully within a week with uh, the second, second video. Until next time, Shalom. He is in complete control, thankfully.